Hey Tom, did you get yeah. a chance to look at uh, that uh, posting that I put up or not? Which posting was that? Uh, about the naturalization. Yes, I did. I'm not sure how it applies right now. I, I guess that would be using the naturalization number for those people who don't have birth certificates. I'm not Five. sure about Five. that. And the reason why I say that is because when you do research on that, on the on the old confederation that was made in, I think it was 1790 or something like that, or... No, no, no. Seventeen, seventeen eighty nine is when the Constitution was uh, formed, and it was actually the con Articles of Confederation were before that. I don't know how much before that, and the reason they formed the Constitution is that uh, there are two issues: the, the states were too independent, so they couldn't agree on anything, and uh, also uh, they uh, they were not uh, allowed allowed in international commerce and so the constitution put them in a in a union that allowed them to participate in international commerce all right well let's say just by chance okay we're all foreigners to the um to the united states quote unquote right yes okay and, and that's that's not be, not because of the confederation it's just simply be, because of the act of 1871 where they re they, uh, they formed a fictional government. All right, well, but what, what actually, well, before that, let's go before that, okay? And let's say okay. just for instance that the reason why is because let, let's say those, those 70 to 100 people who actually did go into the common law courts. Now, I can't tell you, you know, about my relatives if they actually still in and it was grandfather. To I, there's, a lot of noise going, there's a lot of noise going on. It's okay. someone either with a bad connection or with some noise in the background. Yeah, I noticed that, too. So I, I, I couldn't actually hear what you were saying. I'm, right. I muted myself out, so I'm going to mute. Okay, well, I, it didn't sound like it was on your side. It sounded like someone outside. Okay, go ahead, Tom. All right, so let's say that, just for instance, I was thinking in this respect, okay, that if they were still going by something in form back then again, uh, you know, is it still being active? Because I don't know whether it is or not, but it's just a thought, okay, that maybe one of the reasons why we are foreigners to that, and, the, you know, before that Constitution got involved in 1789, that that would be a reason why we can't actually get anywhere because of that whole thing blocking us from that point. If you think it is more levels of government than than we're uh, thinking it really is, maybe there's more levels to it concerning that. And that's one of the things I was thinking about is that maybe, you know, I can't say that my relatives way before actually swore in at the time. And I'm, I'm sure you can't. I'm sure anybody else can't. We have no idea. So it said that you'd be grandfathered in if you were sworn in at that time. But... How can we trace it back to find out if we any of our relatives really did? Like, let's say relatives coming in from uh, uh, Ellis Island or something. You know, they didn't go to a common law court. I'm sure of it. Well, that that that, that I think is a different issue. What we're what we're fighting right now is the fact that we're we're trying to rely on the original constitutional government. Right, but how does the original constitution apply to you if you're still a foreigner? No, we're not a foreigner, but by the Declaration of Independence, uh, we are the sovereigns of the land. We are the kings, kings and queens of the land together, and we join together through the Constitution to form the government which works for us. Then why is it when you go into a court, they say, the Constitution doesn't apply to you because you are not a party to it? Be, well, that 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 is wrong that just uh, uh and i actually i discussed this issue with patrick just yesterday okay. uh, there there's a, 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 a very con conservative libertarian point of view which says that the constitution only applies to the 87 people in the room who signed it and uh, uh, uh patrick has come up with the phrase that he posted today where uh, uh where we are each a principal executive officer, 
and that what the, we the people uh, really means uh, is that the people is an acronym standing for Principal Executive Officer per Laws Eternal, which means it's it's our, our natural natural right. It's, it's just simply part of part of our makeup that uh, we are in charge. But is that just because we're born here? No, that's because we exist whether we're here or anywhere. It's just people in general. Okay. And so that, so that, so. yes, because you know, because we're, we're, we're humans. Yeah, well, I know. Right, uh, and uh, that the that uh, that the uh, Constitution was founded on the Bible, and this was a, a, a biblical idea that uh, per laws eternal uh, in Patrick's mind is the the laws, basically the common laws that were promulgated by the Bible because Patrick looks on the Bible as, as basically banking laws, but it also is uh, the way people treated with each other through commerce and could also be considered uh, common law. That's, that is existing customs and traditions. And, and so the world really does sort of operate on common law. I mean, that's, that's my understanding of it. The, he, every time he speaks about it, though, it's, it's a little bit clearer. But he, he's basically saying that those 87 people, uh, through uh, humanity working together, uh, were our representatives and formed the Constitution for us all, not just for them. No, no, I know that. Uh, okay. That's definitely given, yeah. Well, no, but there are there are a group of people who say that the Constitution only applied to those eighty seven people, and we are their slaves. No, I, I don't believe that. Okay, but, but I do believe that they that the uh, the English people or, or their king at that time came in and formed his own government on top of the government that was already here because he didn't want to lose those colonies. No, that actually happened in eighteen seventy one. The Act of 1871, Washington D.C., which formed right, right, which formed Washington D.C. Yeah. But then, in the back room, they said, "Okay, let's form another corporation called the United States of America, and we'll overlay that." You know, because the government we have now is an overlay uh, on on our constitutional government, and they're uh, they're operating as pretenders. Well, no, I I realize that, but I'm, I was trying to think of. If you could go back to the the Confederation, which a lot of people got killed for, by the way. Um, uh, your what Confederation? Which Confederation are you talking about? The original the the original Confederation. Okay, not, okay, not the Southern Southerners breaking away Confederacy. Right, the the original Confederacy. Right. That whole Civil so, War was the British operation to try to break up uh, the co- uh, the colonies and get us back. Right, they they took away the sovereignty at that point. That's why the um, Congress left at that time because they didn't want to do that. I rem- I know about that, but yeah. what I'm I'm referring to is, is the fact that when they did do the Confederacy, they had the naturalization law there and said that you know if you wanted to become a, a United States citizen, you'd have to make an oath in a court of uh, common law, and it was meant to do that. And I'm I'm wondering if maybe that oh. might be a step though. But that, there's another bad word, United States citizen. The no, uh, no, United, the United States. You, That's what there, I meant. There, there's an American citizen is what we are. Right, right. When, I, we're, I, when we're United States citizens, that's basically the 14th Amendment formed that overlay. And in a way, you can consider uh, the uh, the whole United States as a 51st state. That's the way Patrick is expressing it. What do you feel that we fall under, though? Right now, we fall under a U.S. citizen, right? Well, that's what we're on our paperwork. We're saying we're not. When we fill out the W-8, we're saying we're not. And when we go for the foreign grant or trust, it's a foreign grant or trust because we are not a citizen of the United States of America in all capitals, which means Washington, the District of Columbia, the corporate version of the District of Columbia. No, I, I definitely follow that. Okay. Um, I, I was just thinking about when I went into into the service. I became a Marine, and um, I took an oath to do that. Um, 
and it wasn't really a, it wasn't an oath of office per se, like it would be if you were a, a senator or a, a president, but it was still an oath. Yes. So it was a promise and a pledge. Yes. Which, which I'm wondering if it goes back to that again. You know, as well, as like, there, there's another there's another complicating factor when they formed the corporation in the United States of America, which is an overlay on top. Uh, they they also adopted the the Constitution and retitled it. Mm-hmm. And it did not. They they put it a con, the Constitution for the United States and but that, was the, kept. Yeah. that was the original one. Oh, for okay, then of the United States. Right. It, it's of is the new one. I know right. That. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm well aware of that, but I was just wondering if maybe that's a technicality. That's what I was thinking. I don't know. Well, what it really amounts to is that the whole court system that that we're living under has no more authority than Judge Judy. No, that's true. Yeah, it's all statutory. Yeah. Well, we have to, when we go in there, we basically agree to their jurisdiction and subject matter jurisdiction. And that's what Patrick right. is getting us to, to go after, saying we're, we're, not, we're not subject to that court. I know it's all about consent, definitely. Well, but, how- but they, don't, they don't tell you that. Well, no. They, but- well, basically, when they ask you your name... That's they interpreted that as 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 a consent to their jurisdiction. Well, that's because you're just you're just admitting that you're that fictitious name. I know that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I I figure that. I understand that. And you can look at your license, and they, you can verify that for sure. They're only looking at it in the two two dimensional world, um, not the three dimensional world that we live in. All right. And and I was just thinking that maybe that might be a. a I don't know a clue. I, I'm not sure. I just thought I'd throw. Well, it the, uh, the latest thing is uh, uh, is that uh, Patrick has abandoned the uh, thrift savings plan. Right, I saw that. Yeah, and uh, he's he's going back to working out in the 1099 A's and C's, which right. the the way I understand it. Is with the thrift savings plan, we we were trying to get all of our account all at once, and with the uh, with the 1099 A's and C's, we're getting it in pieces. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, though uh, he, he has his new affidavit. Did you see that? Yes, I did. Yep. Okay. I have to study it several times, but it's basically uh, uh, telling everybody, "Damn it, we're in charge." And he says we should fill it out and and get it apostilled, uh, either at the state level or have the secretary, you know, the uh, secretary of state, the U.S. Secretary of State, apostille it. Uh, Why can't you just get two witnesses and do it that way? Well, that I have to ask him before, because uh, he's he was saying uh, <clears throat> notaries and apostilles are no nos. Or you could do it in in. Uh... Under God, I mean, God is my witness because who's higher than God? Right. And the way he was doing with two witnesses was his was his right and left hand persons. However, it would be good for three people to get together and witness, you know, uh, witness all three of them, wit- you know, witness the other guys. Right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too because that yeah. was away from the uh, notary, and it's the same thing. Yes. Or you could do it under God, and who's going to dispute that? You're going to right, ask it? because the Constitution was based on the Bible. Right, and if you say witnessed under God this day of, right. right. Well, we we'll have to ask him that. I was surprised when he said it needs to be apostilled, but then once and uh, the apostille means that you're saying you you want to uh, use it in a foreign country, and when they ask you what country. I, I think you should say England and Canada. Hmm. Because actually, you know, we're we're shoving it in the face of the London bankers. I'd love to shove it in their face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm so sick of these people. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so... Uh, I'm sorry. And, and then that... Uh, yeah. That document, which is based, basically turns out to be an affidavit saying we're in charge, damn it. Yes. Uh, 
and you send that to your county attorney, give it to your county sheriff, uh, send it to your uh, state attorney general, send it to the U.S. attorney general, and I believe send it to the uh, treasury. Now, that's probably partly on the road toward getting control of the account. So I I think Patrick is probably thinking more through this. He said he was going to be making an audio about this. Okay. Have you heard of um, Jean Keating? I've heard the name. I haven't. I haven't heard, but seen much of her stuff. People have been telling me about it, and I, I can't remember what uh, what I've heard. Of it's hers. It, it's a he. It's a he. Okay. Yeah. Gene Keating um, said that when he was in jail, he found out that they moved the Department of um, Bankruptcy. Uh, I'm not sure re- what the name of it was, but they moved it. Believe it or not, and, and of course you'd you'd probably see this one. They moved it over to um, uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, yes, uh, that actually is the corporate U.S. Treasury. Right, and uh, what I, I believe the current current guy in charge is a Jesus Rodrigo Menendez. Oh, so you've done research on that one too, huh? Yes, he uh, he was. I think it was he, Patrick, who was sending documents to him. But I've I've seen that come up before, and that that actually is a representative representative of the IMF. Okay, well that makes sense too, because the IMF is actually the real party of interest in all these debts. Yes, they are. Yeah. God, I'd love to take the country back. Well, there may be surprise, surprise coming on. That may happen within the next month. But that's oh, a whole wow. that's a whole different group of people doing that. So, Thomas, how do you feel about the process Patrick is working on that we've been studying and stuff? Uh, I I think. Uh, it, it, uh, I'm, I'm uh, confused about it and r- really if, if we're going back to the 1099 A's and C's mm-hmm. I, I see that we need to be making a package when we send that in in which the 1099 A's and C's are part of it and I believe you also have to send in the 1099 V voucher that he came up with and mm-hmm. uh, does it also go along with the bill of exchange don't know. And, uh, and perhaps each time, at least for the first few times, uh, that uh, that bill of lading, uh, your birth certificate or your social security card or your driver's license or ever ever what you're doing, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, he was still, even though he uh, treated it uh, last week as an initiating document of the uh, TSP account. It's also the initiating document of everything else we're doing. I was thinking of just doing uh, the TSC, but uh, just doing one document and see how it'll work. But he's saying to do all of them at once. Well, he he said that he and another guy spent a lot of time on the phone this week okay. uh, with the, the uh, thrift savings plan people, mm-hmm. and they came away that uh, that it isn't going to work. And that what we thought was the account number isn't really the account number. And whatever that account number is, they're not telling us. It might be, um, say, a Social Security number plus numbers before and after. It could be, like, coded. Or it could simply be a, another number that they replace it by. Oh. So, uh, you know, they they generate their own code. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see what you're talking about. So, Just like each, uh, like so, each, each bank gives you uh, their own account number, though they link it to your Social Security number. Which is over, over to the Treasury, too. Yeah. Yep. And which is their their access to your account in the Treasury. God, I'd love to see the courts. I'd love to get into the courts and see their system. <laughs> right. I wonder if you can just uh, send in the TSP without anything and see if it'll work, like, you know. Well, it can't hurt. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Something. But um, yeah, I, I think basically, basically, uh, 
Patrick beat it with a baseball bat last week, and it's just he doesn't think it's going to work. Right, that's what I heard. I kind of like saw. Yeah. So he he thinks it's it's the correct form, but just the the, the count number is the difficult thing to figure out. Well, I or think they, because it it may be the correct form, but we just simply don't have enough information to use it. Right. So and I think I I think he also has some doubts as to whether the account is really there. And I, oh. and I think that may be based on uh, exactly how that conversation went. Maybe that would be a good thing to ask him tomorrow, exactly what was the conversation he had with them. Yeah, he'll probably tell us he likes to ramble on a little. Which is right. Good. All right. Well, I guess I'll go back to studying the drawing board. I, I, just, listened, I just listened to a... a a call, uh, an audio of his back in folder six, folder six or eight, the one about the law, and it was uh, about the administrative court, his Article Three courts. And one thing I noticed is he was much more relaxed then. Yeah, yeah, he it'd be so it'll be so easy to learn when he's more at peace with himself. Well, we'll just we just have to accept that. That yeah, you know, that's, that's that's what he is. That's that's part of who he is, and that's part part of because he's so wound up and involved in it that yeah, that's simply that that's, that's uh, that goes along with it. I'm not offended by it at all. You know, it won't I realize he gets all wound up, and that's because he's concentrating so hard on it. So I respect that. Yeah, yeah, he's um, he's he he's got like. He's got the wiring in his brain to understand all this stuff. Yeah, and I gather the last week when he was on, <clears throat> he had said something the day before that he had gotten in an argument with his family. And I think he was just all wound up from that, too. Well, the last call was very nice. He was very uh, relaxed. Yeah, he, 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 yes, he, he wound down after a while. He started out a little bit tight. But I, <clears throat> I think that, uh, you know, when we ask serious questions uh, mm-hmm. and that we're really discussing the matter, mm-hmm. that does relax him. It's just when he feels that nobody's believing him and giving him a hard time. Uh, or, you know, we may not understand him, but we're not, that's not because we don't, we don't believe him. It's just because we don't get it yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I'll mute out. Okay. So I, I'm going to sp- spend the time tomorrow and and go back over all the 1099 agency stuff <clears throat> and and determine what the package was before he came on to the TSP and then when he comes on see if that's exactly what we do then Tom I got a question um are you going to try to do the house thing with the 1099C Yes I have a yeah I have a friend my neighbor I'm renting but She's just got a real estate license, and she's been taking me to houses, like, to look at. And I told her, I said, you know, I said, if I like a house, you can, she said she can get me, like, the bill. And then, that's, um, a ten, that's a 1099A problem. Well, that, um, it's not a, a C means a ten, ten, to have ten, the 1099C is to cancel an already existing debt. Okay, so it's a 1099A to do, but is a 1099A right. safe to use? I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna like take me well, to the jail way or I, I, way I was planning on doing it, and I want to run it by Patrick. Uh huh. Is if I find a property that I want to buy, go mm-hmm. to the bank and tell them what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. And that I want to I want to acquire it with a 1099A because I know. Uh, with the 1099A, that's how they get the money from my account in the first place. Hmm. So, you know, uh, what I you know, uh, uh, suggest to them is that when they sell me the house, we'll agree on a price and tell tell them to then add a 10% fee to that to uh, for them. For, for, for That's what they get for helping me process it. Yeah, it's like, what is it, the haircut? No. Oh, it's just fee, just a exactly. processing fee. More like a, yeah. more like a wig. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's but that's interesting, you know, because um, <coughs> you'd have to get a house that the bank owns, not someone who's yes, selling. Yes. Not right. not a private owner. Right. 
All right, so it has to be like um, well, something. Well, private like... owners that do it. Now, Patrick was saying that uh, uh, some of some of this can be done for private debts, but I think that 99A and C can only be done with public debts. Public debts being with any any uh, organization that's involved in interstate commerce. So the 1099 A and C is pretty safe to use with a voucher. I gather. Hmm. At least stay away from the 1099 OID. That's what the thing has been getting people. No, to. no, I wouldn't even go there. I would love for you right. to try it. <laughs> I, won't try I it will too. be. I'm, I'm by, I, I intend to doing this first first thing at the beginning of the week, as soon as I understand what the package is. Right, right, that's it, I understand, I'm trying to get it. All right, cool. So I, <clears throat> I need to know exactly what to put in and where yeah. the three-cent stamps go and if a registered label goes on it and what kind yeah. of mail it goes out by and, you know, just how it's addressed and all that kind of stuff. Hey, when you do, are you going to PDF it so, uh, so we'll have a formula or something, a guide? Yeah, well, we should all be working on that ourselves, to, to go yeah. go through that and uh-huh. make our own notes as to what we think the procedure is, and then we compare notes. All right, that's a good idea to work on the 1099A. Right. You okay. know, because it's all there on the audios. He goes through yes. it, goes through yes, the past is. audios, and sit down there and take his audios and try to convert it into an instruction sheet. Yes, yes, I have to do that. I listen to it, and I... To get to write it down. All right. Yeah. Um, well, I think I write it down. It's not any good. And I, the the uh, the audio that I listened to um, today on on the Article Three Courts, he makes the point that not only do we need to go listen to the audio several times, but he listens to his own audio several times to catch mistakes. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. So I, I I think that's that's what we need to do is go go back and review the whole 1099 process uh, with the uh, and I believe the, the letter of safe passage and recall and probably all of that should be part of the package or at least let's see, uh, put them together as part of the package and if Patrick tells them we don't need them then that's fine we take them out but let's get get ready to do the whole package. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Anything okay. else? No. Yeah. Yeah. I I was doing a little bit of looking this weekend, researching, and I was looking at the Treasurer of the United States, not the Secretary of Treasury, Secretary of the Treasury, but the Treasurer. Yeah. And the Treasurer is actually a senior advisor to the Secretary of the Treasury, and she is in charge of Fort Knox. She signs signs on the right-hand side of the Federal Reserve notes. The Secretary of Treasury, Secretary of the Treasury, signs... I'm sorry, signs... Hey, what is it? Gash is vegetable. Someone's talking in the background about vegetables. Please mute out. Is it done, all the stuff? No. Okay. I, I, I mixed that up. The, the secretary, I mean, the treasurer signs on the left-hand side of the Federal Reserve notes. Okay. The secretary of the treasury signs on the right-hand side. Okay. Now, Patrick had said that uh, assistant, uh, he says it's the deputy uh, of the treasury, secretary of the treasury, that's in charge of the federal financing bank. Okay, well, my which, thought which is, was, which is the access to our account in the postal system. Okay, because I think I think we're back to to treating the post of uh, the postal system as a bank. Okay. Well, I was wondering if she, in her position, the treasurer, is actually um, a remnant of the de jure um, constitutional government. 
instead yeah. of corporations. Yes, yes. And in fact, uh, yes, she did point that out about a month ago. That uh, I, I, I keep getting mixed up. The Department of the Treasury is, I think, the de jure version, and the Treasury Department is the uh, the constant as the corporate one. Well, I wonder if we just need to be sending these forms to the treasurer instead of the secretary of the treasury. Do a bill of exchange to, or a bill of lading, something to transfer the money out of okay, I just Googled, public file under the private I just, I just Googled U.S. treasurer. Okay. And I came up with treasury.gov. And uh, the treasurer of the United States has direct oversight of the U.S. Mint, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, and Fort Knox, and is a key liaison with the Federal Reserve. In addition, the treasurer serves as senior advisor to the secretary in the areas of community development and public engagement. So that's pretty much what you said. So... I wonder if that's something we need to investigate on where to send forms, where to send packets. Okay. No, no. So why don't you Google U.S. Treasurer, and it's the second entry, because now this, uh, there are several tabs there. Uh, the second tab, the, I just read you the mission tab, which is short. And okay. this, then there's the history tab. Over the years, the Office of the Treasurer has been seeing tremendous changes and reflected off in turbulent history of our nation is the only office in the Treasury Department that is older than the department itself. Originally, the Constitutional Congress created joint treasurers of the United Colonies. On so, so there's that whole history right there. Hmm. So we should be reading that, and because I think it goes back to what you were saying, this is the de, de jure Treasury. Okay. Where does the comptroller fit in? Well, we'd have to Google that and see what his mission is. So I Googled U.S. comptroller. Okay, Wiki says... Comptroller General of the United States is the director of the Government Accountability Office, formerly known as the Government General Accounting Office. A legislative branch agency established by Congress in 1921 to ensure the fiscal management and, uh, and managerial accountability of the federal government. So it's not part of the uh, administration, it's part of the legislature. Now that's that's the wiki version. Remember, wiki wiki can be right sometime and it can be wrong sometimes. It depends on what the cabal wants it to say. Right. The cabal. Yep. Okay. Here's here's the office of the comptroller of the currency. Well, that's a different office. Uh, the one I read you was comptroller general of the United States. Right. The other one is Comptroller of the Currency. Okay, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. Bring it up here. Uh, no, I don't want to buy anything. Uh, charters, regulates, and supervises all national banks. It also supervises the federal banks and agencies of foreign banks. And thrift institutions, so what I'm reading too. That's not what it says here. Well, I got mine off Wiki, Wikipedia too. Well, this is this is actually the government itself, USA.gov. Oh, okay. Slash directory slash federal slash office of the controller of, cur of the currency.
Now they may do may they may do thrift also, but they're not admitting it here. Yeah. No, I see that. All right. Google is your friend. Oh, definitely. It, you know, bring, it brings up good stuff. It brings up bad stuff. You have to learn how to sort it out. Okay. Hey, did you guys uh, did you guys hear me before? Because I forgot to mute myself. Did you hear me say broccoli? Yeah, I heard you about, oh. <laughs> about all the vegetables. Yes. I'm so sorry because I'm making dinner at the same time trying to listen to this. Okay. Excuse yeah. Me. Okay. Anything more? Will we go back and hit the books. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Okay, you know, at least with these conversations, we can give ourselves goals when we go back and review it. Yes. Okie doke, then. Okay, thank right. you. Yeah. So, uh, you. Oh. I guess we need to study up and uh, see if Patrick uh, puts anything more out there and study that so that we can have a good discussion with him because it, it, it looks like he's... Uh, change the track again, but usually as it happens, every time he changes something, he he finds something new that's right. Yes. So we just have to keep going with it. That's, you know, it's basically we're exploring in the jungle trying to find the treasure. True. I do have one more question for you, Tom. Okay, fire. If you were to do a private party in a house, how would you do it? Do you have any idea? <clears throat> I'd probably try to get the bank involved as an intermediary and give okay. them a 10%. And just do a bill of exchange with them? Uh, either that or 1099A. But, you know, basically give them access to the treasury account. And, and give them some money for their trouble, which isn't much trouble. No, hell no. That's a good. Uh, I'm just curious of what you do with it. Yes, that that that's that's my thought on it right now. Okay. And I do have that situation here. When I'm I do too, trying to get rid rid of my property, I actually do want to sell it to an individual. And he he's on some of good relationships with the local, sometimes friendly bank. And we may be able to structure that deal that way. Okay. Okay. Very right. good. See you guys tomorrow then. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Is there anybody left on the call?